one spin one direction, the other one spin the other direction, so it cancels out as the magnetic property of the reason why it's not magnetic. Uh, types of magnets. These are the three most common. That's what we call permanent magnets. Now, permanent magnets are usually found in nature. to hold its magnetic property over a long period of time. Some examples of natural permanent magnets to be found would be uh, examples called a lodestone. Mm -hmm. This type of stone um, is made naturally. It's theory has like lightning strike it and become magnets. Um, other name for a lodestone is called magnetite. Permanent natural magnet are uh, relatively weak, but they do last a very, very long time. Other type of magnets called temporary magnets. These are materials that become magnets, but it loses its magnetic property very quickly. And you can make a temporary magnet by just like getting a soft piece of iron and hammering it. And when you hammer the iron, soft iron, you are realigning the uh, electrons, which cause them all to spin in one direction. And then that's why it becomes a, a temporary magnet. Um, have you guys all done this in like eighth grade science before? Or no? Get a piece of magnet, just hit it, and then it becomes a magnet. And then, or like slightly weak magnet, and then you just pick up with the paper clip. And I'll try that one day. <laughs> Electromagnets is pretty much man made, contains an electricity and magnetism combined, where, in which electricity goes through the wire and the ion core and it becomes magnets. That's an implied electromagnet. They use electricity to create ma magnetism. We can talk more about electromagnetic uh, next week. similar to that of the electrostatic laws. So, um, I should be too different, except for one. <laughs> uh, one of the main laws is that every magnet has two poles. Well, it's, it's called bipolar, so it's either north pole or south pole. And again, these names are arbitrary. Someone decided to call north and south. I don't know if it's all plus or minus. Uh, the interesting thing about the magnetic pole is that you cannot separate these two poles. They're always going to exist uh, between the north and south. If you break the magnet into two halves, the half that's been broken will either become a positive, I mean, it be a, a, a north pole or a south pole, depending on uh, uh, where, how you break the uh, magnet. So the pole will always exist together. You cannot separate those poles. If you break the magnet into two halves, the other pole will become a south. Or not depending on what, what the other pole is going to be. Can I separate them? Second laws are made that light poles repel on light poles attract. Very similar to that of electricity. Opposite attract. So we put a north pole and a north pole next to each other, they tend to repel one another. So like poles repel. If you put a north and a south pole next to each other, they then gravitate and attract with each other. Unlike poles attract. Simple. Just like electricity. And then the last pole, which is very similar to Coulomb's law, is the same. Mm -hmm. 
the electric force on the magnetic force between poles is directly proportional to the product of the pole strength and inverse, inverse the square of the distance between them. Exactly the same. The only difference is that the, instead of Coulomb's law, it's constant equation, they use um, Gauss, uh, some Gauss law equation, which you guys know. Again, similar to that of um, Coulomb's law, if one of the magnets is 5 Tesla, and the other one is 2 Tesla, uh, the collective force between them is 10, ten Tesla. Similar to that Coulomb's law. If you double one of them, then this will double. If, you, if one of them is double, and the other one is double, and then this will be 4 times. Straight. The set of magnets right between two poles is 54 Tesla at half centimeter distance. Why is the magnet strength the distance changed from 12 centimeter to 55 centimeter? Can you use it um, force and magnetic strength interchangeably? Uh, no, force, because when you force, you have to use the gas uh, formula, but you need to use that. So, so strength and force are completely different as well. Because when you use force, we use Newton. Okay, the other example we have is the force between two poles. Uh, this one? Force and then this one with magnetic strength. Yeah, so uh, again, when there's a change in the strength of Tesla, it will also cause a change in force as well. So uh, it's, it's not interchangeable, but it, a change in Tesla will also cause a change in the magnetic force, the strength of it. And, uh, well, change in Tesla. So this is changing this, so what do we use? The inverse square law. Inverse square law. So the original intensity is 54. At a distance of 12. 12 centimeters square. What is the new intensity of strength? And change to 35 centimeters square. We wouldn't have to change it to meters because they're both no, because the both same. of them are the same. Okay. So now, I mean, <coughs> since we are just looking for change in distance, so I have to make sure that the units are the same. Mm -hmm.
So here we have change in distance. What does the change in distance we use in the square law? Um, however, what's the first step we have to do? Converting. We have to convert a unit of you know, distance, right? Because one is in metric and one is in standard. And the metric number for one inch is equal to? 2.54. So 2.54 is one inch. I need to convert this into centimeter. It's up to you. So now we have the same unit of distance. Uh, which original intensity is 50 Tesla and distance of uh, one inch square. What is the new intensity when distance changes to inches to three inches? One square is just one, so it's be good. Um, three square is nine, so it's nine x. One square is one. One times fifty is fifty. Divide by both sides by nine. I have five point five five. That'll be five point five six. and on the test. Keep a careful eye for differences in the metric in the units. Okay. Alright, just a couple of terminologies and then uh, we'll, we'll be done for today. Classification of magnets. Certain materials respond differently to the magnetic property, uh, magnetic field, and we call them differently. So a ferromagnetic would be material that capable of being magnetized. That is material that is attracted to magnets. Example of ferromagnetic material would be such as iron, uh, nickel, gadolinium, or whatever it is. That's used. So pretty much metal product, but in the metal family. Paramagnetic, as in the pairs of in between today, have some slight magnetic. Um, Magnetic material attractions, but not completely attracted to them. You can see it more at the subatomic level. When you see the magnets causes a changes in the electrons spinning around. Example of paramagnetic property would be such as copper, aluminum. Even though you don't really see them attracting them when you place next to them, but at the subatomic level. Okay, it causes a change in the electrons. And 
then with the last one, it's dye my egg and dye my net. In your textbook, they separate these two. I just combine them together as one. It's just uh, dye my egg and dye my net. Non magnetic or just material that's not cannot be magnetized or have no influence uh, by the magnetic property. Robert would be example of non magnetic material. So that's just basic terminology.